Hello everyone, it's Akatrius here, and I'll welcome you to this new video. Today we're going to talk about the 5 most frequent mistakes I see in Christron deck profiles, because I watched a lot of Christron deck profiles, and I saw a lot of interesting and or just plain stupid card choices, or ratio choices, in these deck profiles, and I just wanted to make a video about the 5 most frequent, most hilarious things I have seen in these. The first one being the tuner ratio in some of these deck profiles. And this is the one I'm most surprised of because in testing you should actually notice that playing multiple Quan less than 3c3 or literally 3 Rion is kind of a problem in Crystrons because Crystrons kind of break when they have multiple Crystron tuners on their hand. The more tuners you have on your hand, the worse your hand gets because you need your normal summon on a mill monster or a combo extender or a combo enabler and the Crystron tuners aren't actually what you want in that situation. You want cards like Scrap Recycler, Genix Undyne, Mathematician, Mermel Abyss Spike, or these kinds of stuff. But you do not want a Crystron tuner in your hand. You're going to summon that one out of your deck when you need it, but you don't want it on your hand because that's just better off being a good combo extender or trap or anything you can use for that turn. You can practically summon a Crystal Tuna from your hand with Press Your All, but in the first turn, also Press Your All is reserved because of its uh, pop effect into C3 to actually make the Quarian Gundrax combo happen. So that is also a no. And let's jump into the second one the spells. And I can actually see a lot of random spells, and that's actually a pretty big mistake because these spells don't need to be there. The first one being Machine Duplication, the second one, the second one being Mori of Greed. There are a lot of more examples, but let's just jump into these two. Machine Duplication is a card that works on four different monsters in this archetype, being Quan, C3, Rion, and Preciotl. However, all of these cards have hard ones for turns of their effects and are therefore not really usable as multiples of a field. You actually want to avoid having multiple cards uh, with, the, with the same name of a field. Except for like synchro monsters, but that's a given as well because you don't run that, uh, many synchro monsters more than once. So, eh. Yeah, you generally want to avoid having multiple crystal monsters with the same name of fear because of a hard ones per turn. So, machine duplication is a no no, however, it's pretty much seen in every second crystal deck profile you can find online, which is a big problem. Moray of Green on the other hand is a decent card, don't get me wrong. Uh, however, you could just play a combo extender or like another mill monster or a Mermel Abyss Spy or whatever instead of Moray of Greed to make you a better play and a better hand. Moray of Greed is a card that makes you go even but doesn't really do anything to safely assure that you can go for a combo. And that is a big problem with Moray of Greed and why I would not play Moray of Greed in any type of Crystron deck. Number 3, the Crystron Ratios themselves, and that's something I'm going to make video on in the future, but I don't know when that video is going to be. It's pretty low priority. Well, alright, let's talk about Preziol and Rosenix. Of all the monsters that Crystron has, Preziol and Rosenix are, le are the least helpful for us to achieve our goal. Preziol can be played at 2, however, because of a guarded effect. It is required to play a Prasiotl because of the Quarian Gundrex combo, and having one on the hand would kind of make the Quarian Gundrex combo dead, so you have to play a second one because you don't want to garner it yourself out of a game. Rosenix on the other hand is just a really awkward uh, combination of a bad effect to a bad level, but the token can sometimes be nice for Link summoning, but that uh, we can talk about it also later, but Link Summoning is, isn't very required in this deck, especially with a token to set up first. Also, I've put in Crystallic Potential, which is a good card. It, get, it gets you some draws, it gets you some stats. It is pretty decent as a card, it's just that Starlight Junction is so much better. However, you still have to acknowledge that it is very much possible to play one Crystallic Potential to two Starlight Junctions, that is a pretty okay ratio that I would actually, well, I might test in the future, may, maybe. And yeah, just don't overdo it with Crystallic Potential. Starlight Junction is way better and offers way more pressure. It's a pretty oppressive card, so why not just play Starlight Junction instead? Number four, the overuse of machine type synchro monsters. As I want to explain in a upcoming video for next week, the Crystal Exodic doesn't really require a full machine synchro uh, coverage. 
I recommend to play like 8 machine synchros at most, however in many deck profiles you can actually see multiple like super heavy samurai stealth ninjas, high speed roy kendama or high speed roy puzzle and all that kinds of stuff. That pro the problem with it is that you need more disruptive or oppressive cars. I will explain that in, a, in the upcoming video. But you need more cards that do something to pressure your opponent and to make sure you can disrupt your opponent's plays. And these two cards, although having pretty nice stats and can offer maybe something, you just do not need these cards. Alright. And let's jump into the last one, which is the Link Monsters, and that's a more recent problem. Even though Crystron is a synchro heavy deck, Links are not actually required too much, if even at all. Link Monsters and Crystron should be combo extenders, like Needle Fiber. Needle Fiber is a really good, okay, Needle Fiber is a really broken card in general, but it's a really good card at Crystrons, and it would be probably even played if Link Markers would be left or right, uh, left and right, but left down would be my favorite of them all. So yeah, um, if anything, only play one Mustar Boy or two Needle Fiber when they come out as your Link monsters. Playing many Links just rubs you off space you could use for disruptive or oppressive extract monsters, and you you need these spaces to have impact on the game. All right, that was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope to have some kind of discussion in the comment section. You guys know I answer every single comment on the uh, video as long as I see it, it's harder for live streams. If you comment at live streams later, there is a kind of strange YouTube bug that makes it hard to see them w the way they are posted, so just don't comment on the live streams post uh, after they happen. But if you just leave a comment on a video, no matter which video, I will read it and I will uh, answer to you and I'm always ready for discussion. So put your own opinion into the comment section, let us discuss. This is interact. Uh, this is an interactive channel. I want to have your opinions as well, and yeah, you keep the channel lively and all that. You know what I wanted to say. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. This has been Akatrius, and stay Ravened. Until next week.